A little over six months ago, Sonoff released a pro version of their NS panel called the NS Panel Pro. And whilst the NS Panel received pretty much good or great reviews across the board for its low price point and high customizability, the NS Panel Pro came out to some pretty unfavorable reviews, including from me, who was pretty critical of it at the time, calling it a beta product at best. In fact, at least with beta products, you can usually use the features talked about, they just may have some bugs with them. This doesn't even do that. Now, I don't typically revisit products after their release because usually they don't change very much, but this one had such a backlog of promised features and I've actually received quite a few messages from you asking me to take another look at this now that it's supposedly matured so that we can find out, did I get it wrong? Thank you to Ugreen for sponsoring this video. Ugreen have just launched their new product, the Ugreen 65 watt DigiNess Cube 7 in 1 power strip. This bad boy has three AC outlets, two USB C ports, and two USB A ports, and can charge up to seven devices simultaneously whilst meeting the power requirements of different devices like phones, tablets, and laptops, as it comes equipped with Smart IC which automatically detects connected devices and charges them with their optimal current, delivering up to 65 watts to a single port. In addition, the DigiNest can protect your devices from short circuits, over voltage, overheating and overcurrent through their intelligent processor, which enhances safety. And they also have advanced gallium nitride technology support, which offers up to 95% conversion rate in a more compact size with better heat dissipation through their thermal guard technology. What's really cool is that just one DigiNest is enough to replace an entire bulky power strip with individual chargers, making this a great space saver. Check out the Ugreen 65 watt DigiNest Cube with the links in the video description. As a little recap for those of you unfamiliar with what this device is, the NS Panel Pro is supposed to be a central room controller for all of your smart home devices, with the idea being that you put one of these in each room of your house, connect up your smart home devices, and then you can control all of the devices from one single panel, so things like your lights, switches, and plugs, but you could also use it for other devices like viewing your cameras, controlling thermostats, and even your house alarm. Sonoff also mentioned other actually really cool features like an intercom system so that you could call other NS Panel Pros with its built-in microphone and speaker. There was also power consumption meters, a Zigbee hub, and Sicken to Home Assistant. All of that sounds pretty great, so what's not to like? The problem was that Sonoff mentioned lots of these features on their website and marketing, but a large number of them were not available at launch or anywhere even near to launch with some small fine print mentioning that they would be available in a future update. As we know, you should never buy a product based on future updates, but for people just getting into the smart home world or more casual users who came across this device, they might not know that or they might have seen all of these features listed on the website and thought that is great and bought the device only to be disappointed when it arrived in a half-baked state. The other problem was the price. At the time it was available for 80 US dollars through their early bird special, rising to 120 US dollars after that, which is pretty steep. Now I have no problem with paying a bit more for a really good product that nails everything, but because so many features were missing, really good product this wasn't. Anyways, enough of the history lesson. How does it perform now six months later and have they made good on all of those features promised? So back then, I counted a total of 12 features that were missing on launch that they touted in their marketing, including remote gateway, power graphs, local control, home assistant support, third party device compatibility, security alerts, a local API, matter support, intercom, music rhythm, weekly weather forecast and user wallpapers. Now I won't count matter support against them for now as frankly that is a bit all over the place right now so we will take that one out. 
so which leaves us with 11 outstanding features. Now, as far as I can see, the following features have made its way into the NS Panel Pro as part of software updates over the last few months. So that's power graphs, intercom, weekly weather forecast, user wallpapers, security alerts, and Home Assistant Sicken. So good job there in actually delivering those updates. But it's not all good news because that still leaves us with some features arguably some of them pretty important, still not added yet, or in fact, actually worse than that, they've just removed all mention of them altogether. So back when that original video came out, they had this huge graphic of all of the features, including ones coming out in future updates, and even a little roadmap, which was handy because it at least gave you some idea of when to expect those features to come out if you bought this device, but at some point it seems that they've quietly removed this graphic from their website and just scrubbed all mention of the features completely from their marketing. Luckily, however, I still have screenshots of those original graphics because I wasn't able to find any mention of some of these features anywhere on their website. One important feature that they talked about previously was a local API through a HTTP server running locally on the device but as far as I can tell, that feature doesn't exist on the NS panel, and I don't see any mention of it on their product page or in their HTTP developer documentation either, which does exist for many of their other devices. Same with the music rhythm feature, where you can sync lights to music and it will react, just quietly disappeared from their feature list. Granted that maybe wasn't a feature that was high priority for you, but it's more the principle of them just removing the mention of the feature. In fairness, they did say that it's coming in the future, so as long as they release it by like 2030, that should be all good, right? The features that they have added, however, are mostly pretty good. The intercom feature was a big one that lots of people were interested in, and basically lets you make calls from an NS Panel Pro to another NS Panel, or from your phone to an NS Panel. Now, I don't have another panel to test with because Sonoff clearly wasn't gonna send me another unit after the scathing I gave this device the last time. But testing from my phone to the NS panel certainly works well and is usable enough for a quick conversation. The Home Assistant Sicken, however, isn't great. The idea is that it can connect any Zigbee device or other devices you have connected to the NS panel into Home Assistant to get access to them. However, they want you to use their add-on to do this, but this add-on was pretty much shot down by Paulus back when it was released two years ago for not doing things properly. So I'm not sure I would really recommend it and I'm not sure it has ever been improved. So your mileage may vary there. One feature that they added that I don't believe was in the original roadmap, however, is the ability to open websites directly from the panel. And that is super useful. It means that you can open up a static website, even a YouTube video, or the one that most people will use it for is for opening your Home Assistant dashboard. And credit where credit is due, that is extremely cool. Using the panel itself is fine. It's nothing special. And some UI elements could do with some work. For example, if you're swiping over each page from the right side and you get to the thermostat card, it will often try and control the thermostat rather than swiping the page and you have to move your hand more into the middle and it's kind of a little bit awkward. Just little things like that. And sometimes you do get the occasional minor stutter, but nothing big at all. And for the most part, it works fine. They did also fix my issue I had with viewing cameras so that it now works. It does take a couple of seconds to load a camera view and it is a little stuttery, but it does work properly as intended, which is great. It can't load the mainstream of a camera at all, but with a screen this size and resolution, realistically, the sub view is perfectly adequate. I still don't love the way Zigbee works on this either. To me, it's still not a very good solution and not something I would use. They want you to connect Zigbee devices directly to the panel, but if you have lots of panels in multiple rooms, you're going to end up with lots of little Zigbee networks all over the place, and I would imagine it's gonna cause quite a bit of interference. And each one only has a 32 device limit, so it's not like you could connect all of your devices to one master panel and then control them through the other panels. 
I still think a much better solution would be to let this join a Zigbee network and have it act as a router. Router. Router for you Americans, don't shout at me. In the last video, I said that I was sure someone was going to figure out a way to unlock some of the full functionality of Android on the NS panel. And sure enough, within days, there were already working solutions out there using ADB. And in later firmware, Sonoff have allowed you to enable ADB from the EWI Link app. The upshot of this is that it's quite easy to get around some of the limitations and even allows you to install the Home Assistant app directly onto the NS panel and opens up loads more possibilities and makes this an overall more useful device like it should have been in the beginning. Loading up dashboards in the Home Assistant app can take a little bit longer than usual, especially for some of the heavier custom dashboards. But once loaded, it's totally usable and realistically, you're probably gonna have this sitting on a static page anyway. So big thing, thumbs up for this. Big thumbs up. Big thumbs. So was I wrong about the NS Panel Pro? No, I don't believe so. I still stand firmly behind that video. My complaints back then were just how many of the features they advertised were missing on launch. And whilst they have added most of those features now seven months later, you should never buy a product based on future updates that may or may not happen. And clearly there is still some of the features outstanding that were promised at the time of release. And who knows when and even if those features will ever arrive. Also consider this, what if this device had flopped and they sold a fraction of what they expected to? Do you think there would still be the incentive to commit software development time to adding those features for only a handful of users. I also didn't and I still don't like the Zigbee functionality, which is still an issue. I didn't like that this is a two year rebranded device and I really didn't like the price, which remains unchanged. Is this a better device now than it was six months ago? Absolutely. Is this now the device that should have been released six months ago instead of the alpha that we got back then? Mostly. Should you buy it? For me, it's still not something I would recommend, but it's a lot less likely to cause gasps of horror when someone tells me that they have one. And there we go, that is the NS Panel Pro Revisited. What do you think of this device now? Is it closer to what you were expecting at launch or is it still missing the mark? Maybe you even have one of these and you've been using it over the last couple of months as these features have been added. What do you guys think of the NS Panel Pro now? Do let me know down in the comments. And anyways, that is it for this video. I hope you found it useful and at least somewhat informational. If you did, please make sure to drop this video a like and get subscribed if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. but with the screen this size and resolution, <laughs> and while they have added most of them now, seventh month, seventh month, seventh month later, I also didn't still, I also didn't still, but it's a lot less likely to ga <laughs> And I hope you enjoyed this video and it was a little bit informational. <laughs>